Welcome everyone and thank you for tuning in today. We are starting a new project. So a few people have asked me, um, are we still going to be doing the PHP community project, which is PHP online? The answer is yes. Uh, the short answer. Uh, the long answer is mostly my spare time because it, it's not the most fun thing to stream or watch on a stream, just kind of fiddling around with UI elements. It's why I don't do front end. So we're doing the Laravel CRM API because going back to the past of what I've done, um, a lot of people are interested in system builds and realistic things that you know people can relate to, and a community project just isn't that. Um, however, CRM definitely is. I can see lots of people there in the chat. Hey, good to see you all. Good to see the usual lot turning up. Always good. My beard looks crazy tonight. I actually conditioned it. Um, so I'm looking a little bit wild, so please bear with. Um, so I asked a few people, um, you know, do you want to see the whole process of building this? Do you want to see, you know, do you want me to do all the planning in the background? Or do you want to, you know, just join in and join in with the planning at the same time, right? Um, so people said, you know, they want to see the, it'll be nice to see the entire process. So that's what I'm going to do. Hey Nathan, I've been working with you all day, buddy. So you're following me. <laughs> oh God! Right. So yeah, I conditioned my beard because it's quite dry hair naturally. Just you know, just condition it. It's kind of cool. Got to get them beard oils. I've got some really, a really cool set back here that my wife bought me, which is like you like this thing that you roll on your face and it's meant to help your beard grow when it's got oil it's got like balm and stuff i just haven't used it um i'll get around to it i will have a luscious beard one day one day it'll be the gandalf channel hey eric thanks for joining planning yes planning definitely will be good so without further ado let's dive into it so So this stream, it's all about building a quality API in Laravel for a CRM platform. That's like the focus. Um, we're going to be using a variety of technologies here, like Laravel, Docker, OpenAPI. Um, basically, we're going to just try to build something production ready. You know, the sort of thing that I do in, a, in my day to day job. Um, not one of those typical, I'm going to teach you how to build something in Laravel and if you ask any questions, no, this isn't how I would do it in production. I'm going to show you how I'd do something in production. Um, yeah, it's, it's just roll on deodorant I've been putting in my beard. What's going on? <laughs> Cheers, Alex. <laughs> so we will be data modeling and we will be going through this um, together. But to start with, I just thought we'd, we'd just start the project. Um, where's my terminal? Here's my terminal. Uh, what am I gonna do? I'm not going to make that full screen. Um, as soon as I sort out my office space, I will be probably going back to streaming from my Mac Mini because that actually streamed the screen a lot nicer. But can it scale? Of course not. PHP is dead. <laughs> Come on, Andy. You know that. Right, so let's go to GitHub. Uh, we're going to go to... Okay, let's just go to GitHub a minute. Uh, I haven't even got myself in GitHub. Have I? Oh, no, wait. That's because I did something wrong. Then we go to GitHub. Then we go to me. What have I got? I've just got Transporter in there so far. So I've been working on something in Transporter for the um, to, to enable authentication authentication scaffolding for uh, for transporter requests a little bit nicer um and we talk about that in discord and getting advice from people so feel free to jump to discord in the link below if you want to have a chat about some of that stuff but until then we were just going to go laravel new um i'm going to call it crm just basic laravel we're not going to go jet stream um we're just going to use Laravel Breeze. We're going to be light and, you know, just airy on this project, right? Light and airy. That's what we're going for here. So we're going to click new project from existing files. We're going to go through. We're going to come to here. 
it's not going to show up. So we're going to ask it to refresh a few times, close it, you know, just ask it and then just cancel. And then we're going to go back to it again because it takes a second try apparently with JetBrains. Uh, here we go, we now have a CRM, so we're good. And it's opened in the other window, so bear with me, I will move it across. Here it comes. It was like, oh, that, that's quite an arm workout, dragging that window across. So, what we want to do is... Uh, da -da 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 -da. I want to also use... Ah! Don't ask again. We're gonna. Oh. What's going on? There we go. Maybe now it's gonna go away. <laughs> and I think we got rid of it. Did we get rid of it? What is going? What is going on, PHP Storm? You are just okay. Let, I'm just going to move it to this window where it's not flipping out. Don't ask again. So okay, stop doing that. Um, let's bring you back now that you're under control and now you're behaving. For some reason, those notifications were just jumping around the screen and making it flip. Um, yeah. But, you know, I've, I've been doing it for a while, Andy. It's, it's been really useful. I, I got into that habit from when I was doing Golang development quite a lot. Um, and it, it just stuck with me. Evening, wife. Good to have you with me again. Hey, Nathan, thanks for joining. Sorry, I was having a bit of a moment there with PHP Storm. So I am back. I am back. I know what I'm doing. Uh, keyboard mashing intensifies. You t I have got a key. A Keychron K2 with blue switches. You have not heard keyboard bashing yet. <laughs> so, okay, so what we want to do really here is um, we want Docker, right? I mean, that's, that's what I'd use on a day-to-day -day basis. So let's start Docker up in the background. It'll do its thing, as it does. Uh, Docker will eventually wake up and be like, yep, yeah, I'm still here, don't worry about me. And Docker engine is starting. There's probably an update and uh, we're going to stop that because we don't want that. We actually don't need any of these anymore. So I can remove that. This has been my last couple of weeks and that is the result of the last two weeks at work. Just gone through the, gone, gone out the window because too much has changed. So what I typically do here is I'll create a Docker directory within there. But what I also need to do is yeah, it's no, nothing beats a noisy keyboard, right? Um, composer. You want a docker compose.json. Here we go. So basically what we want to do is we want to define our services within here. Um, so obviously we are going to be on version 3. If I could type tonight. Version 3. That's J Why did I call it Jason? Oh. Should I just come off the stream and start again? <laughs> can I run Docker? Yes, you can run Docker and Valet at the same time. Um, it causes issues sometimes, but not all the time. <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine sometimes. So we're going to want some services. Then we're also going to want... networks uh, and we're probably going to want um, volumes as well so what I'll do I'll start with my network my network is going to be called um, CRM and we are going to do a bridge driver it's almost like it's hearing me. That's a bit weird. No, I, I didn't get on with Sailor, if I'm completely honest. Um, just didn't. Um, don't know why. So 
So we're going to make a new volume for CRM uh, MySQL, which is a, again a driver local. Nathan actually helped me set up some of this. So I'm going to shout out Nate who's in the chat. That's again another lo a local driver as well. Then in our services, what we want to do, we want to build out our services. So we're going to have an uh, Nginx container. Here's our Nginx container. Um, and our container name is going to be, going to do that. Can I add that? And what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this because I'm going to need this in a few places. That's nginx and within here this is going to be from the environment file and basically we're going to say um, project name so that's our container name our build target is going to be current directory docker nginx and then it is going to depend on app. Hey Dan, thanks for joining. Um, and we're going to want some volumes because um, we want to kind of add our code, right? We need to add stuff. Um, so we are going to add the current directory to var dub 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 um, the hosts and we're going to call this one, um, we're just going to do CRM and we're going to say cached. Now this is some voodoo magic that was told to me by somebody at Jump24 of how to do Docker and how it works nicely. So part of what I'm doing here is voodoo magic taught to me by a voodoo master at Jump24 who knows Docker better than me. Um, that's part of it. Because obviously I work with some absolutely mentally impressive people that puts my code to shame on a daily basis um, but it's okay because you know that's why we hire those people right uh, and then we're gonna load in that uh, SSL certificate as well and then we're gonna add that working directory as that Doo -doo. and then the ports that we want to work on is we're not going to use 8080 because we want HTTPS. Um, so we're going to have 443, 443. And then we're also going to have 9008, 9008. And that is our ports. Um, networks are going to be the CRM network. And in a bit, we're going to come back and we're going to add some labels, but not yet. So onto our next service, we have an app service. Um, I'll tell you what I'll do. I will just add a that in there. So our app service, um, again, our container name is, this is PHP. So yeah, it's our app because it's a PHP service. Um, so again, we're going to have project name in there. So we're just going to hot swap that out. So basically what we're going to have in here is project name, and that is going to be CRM. It's, it's kind of that, that simple. Um, and then that means that our container would be called CRM underscore PHP. And it just makes it nice and clean, nice and easy. So then we're going to have build like that. Uh, we don't depend on anything for that one. Oop. Oop, that's not what I wanted, is it? Not our environment. So the first step is uh, PHP memory limit, and we're just going to set that to 512 for now. And 
composer memory limit, we are going to set that one to minus one, so it just never dies, basically. It just doesn't crap out on us like it can do. Um, I'm pretty sure... Um, oh, I can't remember how I found out what the, my user ID is on, on this anymore, but I'm just going to drop it in because I... I found it before on this machine, so I know it is 501 is my specific user ID on here. And we got our volumes. And what we're going to load for our app is everything into var dub 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 v hosts and then into CRM. And that is cached. Um, and our working directory is going to be our dub 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 the hosts CRM like that we have our ports which is going to be nine thousand three to nine thousand three and then our network is going to be CRM. Better network and all of that setup. We're going to add some cache layer in here as well. We have some Redis. Now we have an image which is just going to be uh, Redis latest. Nice and clean, nice and simple. Container name. Drop that project name within there. Um, the ports we want to use is that. Um, the volumes is going to be. Um, what did I call the volume down the bottom? CRM underscore Redis. CRM Redis. Into data and then networks is CRM and then we have got our MySQL stuff. The image is going to be MariaDB latest. Then what we want is um, container name. I'm just going to call it MySQL because standards is what I do. Um, so we're just going to say project name. Um, I'll be using MySQL if it was supported on my ARM device, bearing in mind. Um, so our environment. What do we want in our environment? We want... Our DB password. Then we want then we want the DB database. This is what I, this part I actually got from Nathan uh, Nate in the chat who figured out how I can connect all of this local stuff. So there's the username. Yeah, I'll walk back through some of this in a minute, Bernard. Bear with. There's DB password. The host is sent. How much do password? Yes. And command is going to be as equal D. Character set server equals UTF eight M B four relation. Yep. There we go. And that, this is something that was um, I, someone set this up for me basically, and I use it ever since. 
Uh, okay, so volumes. We have got a CRM underscore MySQL to data. Uh, ports. And network, isn't it? Yeah, I need network. And CRM. So this one, basically, um, basically, I need to go. Or DB port. There we go. Don't ask me about that one. That is some crazy voodoo someone else taught me again. Then the next part is how are we going to get our application to work off of subdomains, basically? And this is something that I've played with, spoken to other people about, tinkered with, got advice on, and this is how it's kind of come about. Um, you use something called traffic. So the image you need is traffic. And I use specifically 2.0 uh, container name. traffic there we're just going to put project name in there there's a container always going to restart that one because that is our ba that's basically our this is like our, our ingress basically a HTTP router that for our container which is going to push everything to nginx and it, yeah, it allows you to do some crazy stuff. Don't ask me too much because I only know so much. Yeah, no, it's meant to be spelt like that. Don't worry. It is actually meant to be spelt like that. Um, it's not a typo. I'm, I know I make a lot of typos, but this one isn't. This one's definitely not a typo. Then Friday's Docker is true, and then uh, API.insecure is true, and then what else we're we gonna do? No, not using Laravel sale. Um, I never. It just didn't didn't work for me. Not the way that I'd wanted wanted to use it. Hi wife. My wife's joined me in the room. She hasn't. Ign ignore what I just said. She's definitely not in the room. And that noise is just a friendly ghost. So, the volume that we're going to mount is var run docker sock, because docker likes to wear socks from the cold days. And we're just going to connect that to uh, there, nice and simple. And that's our volume, blah, blah, blah. And then we want our ports. And we're gonna bind that on port 80. And on port 80, 80. And the network is our CRM network. And that is everything that that needs, however, we need to label one of our applications at this point. Um, so traffic is going to look for a label on one of our apps here. So this is where we're going to start getting some magic, basically. Some crazy magic that other people have taught me. Again, because you, know, you can't know everything, right? So traffic.http.routers dot project name let 
me just copy that because I'm going to need that again. Uh, so for port 8080 is in in you it can exist in another project as long as it's not in use. Um, there is a Docker container you can use which will dynamically set the the ports for your web stuff so you can run more than one at a time. Um, but perhaps a little bit out of scope of right now. Nginx dot rule equals host regular expression where now the expression that we're going to put in here is some some crazy stuff so we are going to match the app domain and then we're also going to match everything on the subdomain that is alphanumerical and then we are going to say app domain so any anything responding to their configured app domain or the a alphanumerical apps a subdomain on our app domain we want to respond with is basically what we're doing there um, I hope I've wrote that out correctly uh, no I don't need to load balance um, so traffic dot HTTP dot routers project name score nginx The priority is one. That's highest priority. And then we're going to do a traffic docker dot network equals proxy. And that is pretty much it. So now what I need to do, I need to come over to EMV. We've got that there. And what we want, we want an app name, or app domain, sorry, to be, um, what did I do on the last one, um, crm.localhost, basically, and then that, what this is going to be, HTTPS. that and then that means that my host here can be my SQL that's CRM uh, we're gonna do database of CRM username of CRM and CRM that should all create that for us uh, session hopefully is file uh, Redis 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 and that should now be Redis right so that's parts of it so if I try and build this now it's just gonna die code looks massive on a 65 inch TV <laughs> the question how does my beard look on a 65 inch TV that's the important thing Chris also good to see you buddy hope you're doing well so what I'm gonna do next is docker I need to create some config so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna grab some stuff and we're just going to paste that in there because it's going to make our life a little bit easier so supervisor d isn't going to be used docker file currently we're going to be using 8 fpm all of that sort of stuff some nice stuff going on in here um composer yeah we don't need that Don't need any of that, that should be good. So what I'm wondering is, is that a 8.1 dash FPA? I'm gonna try and do 8.1 on this. Um, it's an experiment. I've not tried 8.1 yet, so this will be my experiment. Thank you, my guinea pigs, for helping me. Opcash, 
Uh, bah -bah, checking every graph. Cool. Yeah, we're good. There's our PHP. There's our Docker file for PHP. And our next one is our Nginx. So we're just going to copy what I have over here, over to here, drop that in. Uh, we're going to ignore that key because we're going to regenerate that key. But what we're going to do is make sure all of this is pointing to the right place, basically. Because when you are moving Nginx from one thing to another, you need to make sure it responds correctly. Excellent. All of that is looking good. Uh, Docker file, Alpine, yep. Nginx conf, nothing out of the ordinary going on in here. It's just basic stuff, but by mounting it as a volume, it means that we can be very specific about our configuration and how we want to work. The only thing I need to do now is I need to go into Docker Nginx SSL. I, as you can see, I've got an app cert, app key, and open SSL config. What I need to do, I will, I'll do that and hit this in here. So, cd, crm, docker, nginx, SSL. And instead of data filter, which was a service I was building for, we're going to call that crm. So what, what we're doing here is we're using a CLI tool to generate a self-signed SSL certificate uh, and it's going to respond under star.crm.localhost and crm.localhost, meaning that we can use a self-signed SSL, basically. And there we go. So we should now have these. So there's a cert. cert. I can delete that. I need to rename this into app cert. There's an old app key from a different project which isn't going to respond. And what we can do is we can refactor and we can rename that one to app dash key. And now we're good. So, what we're going to do, if we come back. Missing the last line of my con again. Sorry. There we go. So that last command that was just makes it. That was in the Docker nginx SSL directory. And you just run make cert um, star for subdomain dot domain dot tld, and I also want it to be to respond on crm dot local host at the same time but so docker compose let's build let's see if this will build right that's the first step it won't so failed to load metadata for 8.1 fpm so some reason it's not letting me use um 8.1 fpm so what we'll do instead is we will just change that back to 8 because i know that definitely works And what we'll do is we'll have a look let's open up Safari quickly okay PHP 8.1 FPM okay so there's different layers that you can use yeah just give me some cookies I don't mind having cookies library PHP tags Sort by newest, filter tags. I want to find 8.1 dash FPM. Not yet then. Okay, that might be the issue. Never mind. We tried. We'll, we'll have a look at what we can do. Um, 8.1. Three days ago. Do, 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 do. Three days ago, three days ago. Release candidate six. It's 
FPM Alpine. So, I mean, we could test it with this and just see if it runs. Um, I don't know if it will or not, though. That's the thing. It, it's always kind of like placing your bets. So, that's built. That runs. So, if we come back and swap that. We'll try again. We'll try and build it again, just in case. Let's just watch and let's find out. So far, no complaints. That's a good sign to me. And now it does. Um, App get not found. Okay, so something to do with Alpine is making it fall over itself. Let's just try it without the Alpine. And while it does that, I'll have a quick drink. Is it gonna do it? Drum roll. Really long bloody drum roll, come on. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm giving up the drum roll. Peckle Redis, looking good. Things are looking good. Not seeing any complaints yet. Seeing lots of stuff happening. Come on, you know you can do it. You can do it. This is where I find out one. So Alpine's just a trimmed down version of, of the main image. And what it means is when you think of Docker, you get diff you get images and you can either have that full image. Um, if you understand Linux, I'll probably be able to explain it that way. So you could have a fully fledged distro, which is Ubuntu, Ubuntu desktop, good to go everything you need. It's got a GUI, it's got all the server stuff that might come with it, and it's got a GUI, and you're good. You install it, you could do everything you could possibly need to do. However, on a server, you wouldn't install Ubuntu desktop, because you don't need the GUI. Ooh, hiccups. Because you're going to connect over SSH. So it's got all of this heavy stuff that you don't need. So you go for Ubuntu server, because that's a lighter trimmed down Alpine version of the distribution and that's the same thing with, um, with with docker images basically is it's a trimmed down version the bare minimum for that container to run and act properly like what I've got in um, my nginx I use Alpine typically because I just want a really thin nginx client that I can pass config and that is it I don't need anything extra it's just that um, Okay, so that's that's failing. So um, I'm just gonna go 8.0 FPM. 8.1 just doesn't want to work for me, so we'll just go for it this way. Just gonna compose up to minus D, see if it works, and we are up. So now, have we got Safari? Yes, we do. HTTPS. CRM dot localhost apparently not found. What's going on? So that to me is saying something is not connecting as expected. There's some error logs, bloody blah, blah. That's fine. That's fine. All of that's fine. Uh, Conf D site. CRM public. I'm wondering, is it something to do with? I'll tell you what I do. I will do what I like to do um, for working with Docker on a local project because, you know, remember that Docker exec command is just a nightmare. You're know, trying to remember the exact names of everything and all it just starts to get a little bit messy right so i create a make file so i click this and i go the recipe prefix plus equals um so that's basically saying start the 
I don't know the specifics, but I have found it a few times. Hey, Keo, thanks for joining. So, anybody watching, this dude is doing some fantastic videos on, on uh, PHP on YouTube. If you want to learn anything to do with um, dependency injection, um, like the proper theoretical side of it, anything to do with solid PHP, PHP the right way that it should be done in 2021, 2022 coming up. Check out his channel, it is amazing. I watch his videos because even I learn stuff from him, it's incredible. I've been writing PHP for over 10 years and some of the stuff he's doing is just inspirational. So what we also add is we add a default goal for our um, make file and we're gonna just call this help. So what we need, we need to define some some commands to run in our make file. We have help, and what we're going to do, we're going to echo, and what we'll echo is something very simple of welcome to IT support. Have you tried turning it off and on again? And for now, we'll leave it at that. So now if we're in our project and we just run make, eh, spelled it wrong, didn't I? Here we go. Now if I run make, it'll just echo it out and we're good to go. This is our little C C um, CLI tool to help us. Yeah, I was watching one of his videos today. Yeah, he's yes, some amazing content on there. Um, so yeah, inspirational stuff. You know, just go go check it out. It's awesome. Um, so there's a few things I want. I'm going to want an install command. So if somebody else jumps on this project at any point, I want them to be able to just run a selection of commands and just get stuff set up and running. Right. So we want them to be able to install things. I want them to be able to run their tests. So we're going to say, okay, so test. Um, and what we're going to say is, okay, so we're going to docker, we're going to execute on the CRM PHP, we're going to say PHP artisan test. So now if I come back here, I can say make test, it will run some queries and it will run my test for me. And instead of having to go docker exec, do this, it, it's it's just simple make test done no, no messing around no no worrying about oh what container was it it's all set up for you using the make file um one of the nice things about using them in my mind um i add all of the typical things that i do so we go like migrate um which is going to be that this is where um uh, github copilot is going to pick up on some of the things as well um, I always do an analyze, which is a, I do this locally. There's no point running this within a container. Um, I'll do a vendor bin ph, php stan analyze because, you know, it's easier. It's, you know, why not? And what else do I need? I also have a generate command. So I have a docker exec. This is going to require a package. So we're going to go CRM, PHP, PHP, artisan, um, IDE, helper, models. And I'm going to write to the model. I like to write to the model personally. You can generate like a big kind of mix in file and it just loads things. That, I, I get issues with that personally. So I like to do it this way. Uh, let me kind of make sure you can see some of this. So here's our help, our, our make file so far. That's how we're going to generate. And then I like to add little helper functions. So we can do things like, I want to be able to SSH into the app quickly. So what we're going to have here, we're going to say, okay, so Docker exec minus um, it uh, CRM underscore um, engine X that's actually not app that's engine X so we'll call it that and then we are gonna say 
do that with uh, bin sh and we can ssh into the nginx container very quickly we can also do the same thing for our php so we can say minus it crm php bin sh we could do the same thing for mysql and there we go we can do the same thing for redis i think and then that should be everything that we need really but we, we extend this as we go using the laravel id helper there is a way to automatically generate the model properties on migration there is there is a way that you can do it um but I really like control <laughs> of my code. I don't like everything to automatically do it. I am a huge fan of just, um, ooh, yeah, definitely need my package. I, I'm a huge fan of just doing things when I want them to, so I can understand it. Um, so compose require. I think is ID helper. Oh, okay, so we're gonna have to find it, aren't we? Um, here we go. BDH, not VHT. I apologize, Barry, if you ever watch this. Um, that is what we need. That will go in now, and that is good. So, the next step, we want to say um, composer require. Pest dev with all dependencies. Obviously, we want pest. Laravel plugin. Now we've got the Laravel plugin, we can say pest install. We're not going to start it because it always asks that, which is really annoying because Composer and your, your profile just doesn't match. Hey, Craig, thanks for joining. Hope you're doing well, buddy. Um, so that's pest installed. We're also going to want Laristan with all dependencies and dev. So Laristan is super important for this sort of stuff. Um, if you're going to write production code, you want to make sure you're doing testing, you're doing static analysis, you're doing quality control in some way. Um, so we want a PHP stan neon file. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to grab what I like to use, which is this one. So that isn't, I haven't created that yet. So we're just going to um, you know, not include that for now. And we're going to go level nine. It is going to complain like hell, but we're going to use it. And what I'm going to do is create a new directory quickly. Source. You've seen me write code before. You know I'm going to write source and domains. Don't pretend you don't know. We all know it's going to happen. And then down here. I have a domain. Which is source. Domains. Done. And then. Let's update our our um, local stuff nothing to install and we're all good so make test should now run best make analyze should now run php stan so that is php stan on level nine so it is the strictest it can be. It means you don't have to. Um, you don't have to do it as strict as nine. If you if you're not comfortable, don't do it. No, don't force yourself to do something you're not comfortable with on a static analysis level. Um, oh, thanks for joining, David. Um, we will be kicking off. We are just doing a lot of project setup right now. 
So there is level 9. And what that is complaining about, if we just run our static analysis again, there is an error on in the root service provider by default. So the way that we fix that, the cheating way that we fix that, is to make sure it is all on one line and tell PHP stand to ignore it. Because that's not my code. I don't want to make too many changes on it to then get bitten in the arse, basically. Um, I'm going to return void, do some return typing, some more return typing. So, basically, it means we need to remove that line. It means we need to remove that put an arrow turn this into a new feed a new function a new new fun function syntax and what we're going to do is pitch stand just i'm just going to tell it to ignore that next line it is complaining about this so it's because of an optional helper, basically. Um, that could be null. There might be a nice way that we can actually do this ourselves. So what we'll do, I'll show you that this fixes it. And then we'll have a look at what we can do with it. So if we just ignore that for now, I'm just going to copy that into my clipboard so that I can just quickly add it if I need to. So let's drop optional. So request user id or ip and what we're going to do we're just going to to stop this complaining we're going to make sure we are using uh, uh, php 8 syntax which means that this is now valid so let's see if that fixes it no cannot access property id on mixed so that might that might just die. Um, I mean, you could like wrap it like that. It's just starting to get a little bit messy though, right? I mean, we can just tell it to ignore it for now. Good idea. Good idea that, that man, that man Craig. So, what Craig's just recommended, I'll put it on the... So, no, it's not. I just, I literally just tried that, didn't I? Silly me. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I tried that. I, I thought it was something weird then that I hadn't thought of. No. So, basically, I just tell it to ignore it. Um, it's the best I could do right now, unfortunately. Um... Yeah, I've declared strict types. You know, I'm doing my bit. Keeping the bits that I know I have to keep. Yeah, I'm going to remove that because that's not going to be wanted. And that namespace isn't ever going to appear. Um, so, where, where can we go from here? First step, obviously, is we want to make sure that we can get this to respond. So, that's currently doing a 404 not found. So, what we're going to quickly do is... Go to local host 8080. This is our traffic dashboard, basically. Um, we've got a router. Apparently our router's not working. Apparently just something isn't working. Success, success, explore. Here we go. Um, CRM.localhost, which is going to the Nginx Docker container. So things should be working. We've got some services things are working as they should be i'm just not sure why it's dying um so this is where we use our make file and we can just say okay let's just go into nginx So that's all in there. That's all working fine. So let's go back a level. Let's go back another level. Vhost and vhosts. Uh, okay, so I think 
Um, I know what is going wrong here. Um, in our Docker setup, down here, we are saying we are mounting stuff. We're saying that our working directory is the hosts, plural. So let me just go double check that against another project that uses this. Uh, it says vhost, it should be under, so vhost. Um, so again, vhosts. Working directory vhosts. So we've got it in Docker Compose V hosts. So now if I come back here, I'm just going to disconnect from that quickly. I'm going to say Docker Compose down. We're just going to bring it down. And now we're going to Docker Compose up. Uh, sorry, rebuild. Um, now we can docker compose up minus d all working and we're back at laravel and we're on crm.localhost so now i can also go through to um api.crm oh okay so now it's kind of of course it's going okay so i'm gonna bring chrome over because it's I've noticed I have issues with Safari with some of this stuff. Um, it could be Safari, it could be config. Um, HTTPS API.crm.localhost. There we go. So what I'm going to do is in our roots, in our web root, this little bit down here, obviously add script types there. We're not going to return a few. Who wants to return a few, right? We build APIs. We're just going to dine dump request server. So I'm pretty sure we can do like server all. I don't know. There should be something we can get, right? So we want to be able to get. A key, null, retrieve item server, that's not what we want. So what we want to do is do, 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 do. you can get like the domain or you can get something. Let's get a root. Request root api.crm.localhost that's pulling through test but as soon as I go okay that is matching never mind <laughs> okay so there we go we can start matching things um, so it looks like it's just gonna catch everything and pass it through so that's good so we we can we can work with that we can work with that but obviously we don't have to we can also go to just crm.localhost so we're going to keep that there as a test that we can go back to. That's fine. And our Docker Compose. Docker is now working. So what I'm going to do, come back, come back, and come back. I'm going to start this as a project. I'm going to add everything. Then I'm going to commit. And I'm going to say, Maravel working with traffic in docker or sub domain routing so in theory what i should be able to do now is catch subdomains from that one laravel instance on the one docker container meaning i can do multi-tenancy from one container using the custom url and just just make things nice um there's our setup we are set up in under an hour We've got Docker running, we have Laravel sorted, we have PHP Stan running to level nine and it's happy. The next step is 
um, Barry BDH Laravel ID helper. Let's get these generators running, right? Um, they recommend putting it in here, like this, in the post update command. So anytime you run like some sort of update, that's what should be running. Um, which is fine, by the way. Absolutely fine and right way to do it for this sort of stuff. So there is the post update command. Is it a post update command? Yeah. So I'm curious why we don't have the composer scripts post update running anymore. Um, but I'm not going to add it because I don't need to. And what we're also going to do. Oh, Bernard, so you have to be invited to use GitHub Copilot right now. Um, so just hang on, apply to get an invite and you'll eventually get one. No one else can invite you. It's just one of those when you're allowed in, you're allowed in. So that is that. So now if I just quickly do a composer update, I should get some files generated basically. It's going to update dependencies, generate and optimize files. And it's going to do writing files, writing files. I can now say git add that, git commit, and we're going to say um, Aravel ID files generated. And we're good. What wouldn't what be an issue in production? Sorry, Joe. What might be an issue. So that is that part. And while we figure some things out, we're going to start looking at what we want from this. So what I'm going to do. I'm going to add a new page called functionality. Uh, ID helper is in dev. That is absolutely so. The idea of that ID helper is for static analysis and as a helper to your IDE, so that you can click through and it static analysis will know what types of what. Um, it isn't actually using your application, it is using your application tooling. So it's not a problem with it being a, a minus minus dev, basically. Um, and you don't run an update on production, you redeploy to production. So you're never running that command anyway, so it's fine. So the functionality that I want, um, we want basically an inline list. Nope, not an inline list. Ah, how do I delete it? Arr, delete. Go away. Don't want you. I want a do, 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 board, maybe. What do I want a list? We're going to go for board. We're doing a board. That's how we're going to do it. We're going to do a board. So this is obviously tasks to do and we're going to have, okay, so we want to be able to do authentication. That bit's obvious. Um, we want to be able to, we're not going to have teams, we're going to have accounts. So um, when you sign up, part of the onboarding is going to accept, okay, so you know, sign up as a user, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so now create, this is a CRM, create your space basically. Um, so create your account space, um, however that's gonna work. And then what we're also gonna do, once we've set that up, we're gonna say, okay, so invite your teammates. We want that to be able to happen as well. And then we're gonna say, okay, so what, we wanna invite people. Um, so when those people join, they could be part of a team. So we're going to want roles and permissions. Uh, that makes sense. Um, the next thing that we're going to want after roles and permissions is we're going to want to create uh, companies. 
Right? I mean, it's a CRM. We want to know where people are working. We want to also say, you know, do we want to add departments or do we want to add that in manually? How much about this, you know, the, the organization tree do we want to know, basically? So I'm going to keep it so that I want departments. Um, and what team within that department are they going to be in? You know, it's a HR department. Is it accounts payable team? Is it the um, payroll team? Who, who does that person work for? Um, and then we're going to have, we want contacts. Um, so that we can say, okay, so this person, um, we're probably going to want like a job titles because there's going to be a lot of shared job titles so we may as well kind of link that through a relation right because why duplicate that string value all the time um, the other thing that we're going to want to do is a you know a, a user is going to have some level of interaction so we're going to have like interactions and different types of interactions going on and that's kind of like the basic functionality of the CRM. We want to be able to say, log this interaction for this person. Um, I suppose you could have like projects. So you could say that, you know, create this project for this company and here is the person who's my main contact on the project. So you could say, okay, so project is relating to company um, and Con, uh, contact and then we can log interactions against um, that project but we could also perhaps log interaction against a person as well and what we're probably going to have we're probably going to have an enum within the application to say um, like interaction types you know is it a lead is it a qualified lead all those typical CRM behaviors basically so that's what we're looking at there so from a a data modeling perspective is yeah we've got a user that's cool tenant stuff so we, we want multi-tenancy right we want people to sign up but we want them to do multi-tenancy and it's gonna be all fantastic all singing and dancing so I think I might use a tenancy for Laravel package by, um, I believe this is Stan, oh no, I can shoot, uh, Architect, which is Stan, Samuel, Stan CL. This, this person who I can never figure out what that's meant to be. Um, him on Twitter, we're gonna use his package because purely because code course did a course on it and if i really struggle i know alex has probably answered half the questions if you've not used code course before um i definitely recommend you getting getting get an account so you can say multi tendency basics multi database two hours and 13 minutes he does it quicker than me i just do two hours of stream on different topics um, but here users, if I uh, go to the introduction, uh, no resources, I can download the source code if I want to, but I won't. Um, but he uses a very specific package. The first thing that we need to Ooh. figure out is what... Alex's voice is so easy to listen to as well. Hey, no problem, Samuel. Thanks for coming. It's a great package, so we're just gonna go. We're just gonna set it up, okay? We'll just we'll set it up. What is multi-tenancy? If you don't know what multi-tenancy is, go read that and understand it. Um, I'm not gonna go into too much detail on what multi-tenancy is. Um, so where are we? Nothing to commit. Cool. So we can install the package, and next we can say artisan tenancy install. So I can say, tenancy install, created config, created migrations, created tenant folder, and I can now move things to a tenant. Um, and I can add service provider. I shouldn't need to add the service provider in the latest version, I believe, unless it's creating one. 
Yes, it is. It's creating one, so I do need to load that in. So in my config app, um, yeah, always add if it's from an external source because I do stuff on the command line all the time. Then in my config down here, uh, package service providers, application service providers. So app providers, tenancy service provider, class, done. That has now been loaded. Our next step, if you want to use a different database connection, nope. Um, configuration, what do we need to do? Tenant model, so tenancy modes, what's automatic mode? So by default, the package bootstraps tenancy automatically in the background. This means that when a tenant is identified, usually using middleware, the default database cache file system is switched to the tenant's context. Okay, quick start. What do I need? Install, create a tenant model. Okay, so I can go create that. Let's let's go get that done. So make model tenant. That means we can come over to our tenant model. App models. We've got a tenant now. Ah, thanks, Andre. Much appreciated. Um, so we're not going to do a has factory. We don't. We don't. Yeah, it's, it's not going to have a factory. Um, it's a lot. It's a different sort of model. So what we're going to have is it extends base tenant and implements a tenant with a database. So that is how this needs to happen. That basically. So we're not going to do that. We use something else. has a database. I'm not going to use that. And we, you know, uh, um, let's open up the composer.json and let's run the update on here because some reason file system stuff, it just really has issues and I'm not sure why. Um, hi, thanks. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not even going to try and butcher your name, sorry. I'm really bad with names, um, so I do apologise. So, as base tenant. Okay, so that's why I went import, so I can just quickly pull that across. So we just need that. We need to pull that in, basically. Has a database, blah, blah, blah. And we're also going to say, use has domains. Run, get client key name, blah, blah, blah. Uh, has database and has domains. Has database, has domains. There we go, that, that's resolved all of those issues. All right, so now we can just add all of that and just say, git commit, adding Laravel tenancy package and creating tenant model. So that's that's all good. That's that's working. We don't really need to do much here. You know, we can we can pretty much, you know, just delete that because that, that's out of our control. Yes, there was an error. I I, I figured out what it is. Thank you. Um, so we've got if we're going to do anything other than what they recommend it says to change the config I don't need to worry about that tenant and vents there's lots of tenant and vents central routes mapping web routes mapping API routes domain domain for each of this central domain as domain central domain um, okay so we need to make some changes to our root service provider basically so let's go check that out let's get that started um, that's going to be vital, right? Routing to our tenants. Um, it's going to return an array. Why is that complaining? Methods and it should be re returned mixed. Uh, okay, that's going to complain if we do a make analyze. So we found seven errors already. 
So let's go. Let's go clean clean some stuff up, right? I mean, we're, we're trying to make sure we do things correctly here. So, tendency service provider. Cool. This is going to return an array. Static string. Cool. We don't mind that. We can leave a lot of this. Uh, lots of jobs going on. Lots of stuff going on. That's all fine. Um, that's void. That's void. Turn void. Uh, boot events again. It doesn't have anything to return. That's fine. Map routes. Again, avoid return. So we can fix that up. Tenancy middleware. It's not returning anything. So again, we can just avoid return that one. Return. Turn. Cool. So, analyze again. Let's see where we are. You're aiming for my beard. Yeah, this is. I, I like having my beard. It's just, just fun, right? Okay, so, cannot off access offset on. Okay, so, the way it is doing that on line 161. This app kernel. So basically, we want to create the kernel class and then prepend to middleware priority. Okay, so I'm going to do this differently. Um, I'm going to say this app we're going to make and do it that way. <laughs> there we go. Clear that up. And we're going to import the Illuminate HTTP HTTP kernel. And there we go. Um, and what I'll do just to make sure this is nice is say kernel is that, and then I can say kernel do that, and that should all be fine. Unhandled binding resolution. Okay, we'll try catch whatever is throwable as an exception. Um, and if it really has an issue, then we will throw that exception. Um, and then we'll do that, and we're good, which means we can now say. There we go. Make analyze. Ugh. Make analyze. Yeah, the, the longer the beard, the more experience you get. It, it this isn't me being good at this. This is all this this is literally my beard. You know, it does nothing to do with me. Okay, so this is prepend middleware. It is causing an issue on that. That is going to be a kernel. That is now fixed. So, the issue we're having. Central domain should return an array, but returns mixed. So. Central domains, central domains. We're trying to return it directly um, in here. So, we're going to do it this way. If it is not an array, then we are going to throw a new 
runtime exception with the message of tenancy central domains should be an array. We're going to be like super strict on this and we're not, we're not going to leave it up to chance. It's going to be, you know, if it's, if it's not an array, then we can do it that way. And then we should be able to say, make sure it's an array by casting. And there we go. We shouldn't have to cast, but to get rid of some static analysis errors, we'll just do it. Um, just just to make sure it's clean and make sure it's all definitely, definitely going to work. So, when we are mapping routes, what we need to do now is um, map web routes. Okay, so this looks like it's for an older version of Laravel, this specific part. Um, Because that's not how that works anymore. This roots, which is load roots using the callback. So what we're going to do is we're going to ignore the web ones right now. I think uh, we are going to say for each this central domains as domain. We basically want to just do this and then we're going to say domain and the same with this um, central domains so in our, if we just save that and let's just um, analyze that, make sure we can still test. We're failing. So failed asserting, blah, blah, blah. So basically it's, it's failing on the domains now. Called it undefined method, tenant domains in traits, forwards, calls. root domain so we need to go to central domains to go to the config um, the tenant config tenant model is there UUID generator domain central domains here so We should be able to app domain that one. That is running fine. But obviously it's doing a dying dump. So if I just come to that route and just return like that view again for now. Root web return view. Welcome. Uh, stuff it. We're just going to do Don't know why I didn't do this to begin with uh, We're just going to quickly give it a name of home because I like to do things like that So now if we run make test how what happens it's passing we're good. So get status you can add that configuring tenant central domains we're good so the next step in our quick start tutorial is a tenant roots middleware web group this is your multi-tenant application prevent access from central domains uh,
So initialize tenant by domain. And we want to group everything using that. It's going to be the nicest way to do this. Because I basically I want the API to respond as multi-tenant only, which means you know I log into my tenant basically. So if I come back to my root service provider a second, root middleware web and root middleware API there. So that is all fine for the basic of it but what I also want this to have on this middleware is we want that API but what we also want is initialize tendency by domain And what we also want to do is prevent access from central domain. So we'll probably just write a quick, um, add a quick test for that manually. Let's make sure we're not failing on any static analysis for doing this. Okay, so we do. Invoke with three parameters, one required. Okay. The middleware actually takes an array. Oh, there we go. And there we go. And then make a test. Make sure that still works. Cool. So, basically, let, we just need to create a quick root and make sure that the API doesn't respond at this stage. So here's our roots. We're going to ignore that for, for now. We'll come back to what we need to do with that. So we're doing a get root. And we're going to call it ping. Um, we're just going to do it in line. Return a new response. As JSON, and what we're going to do is the data is going to be an array. Ping pong, and the status is going to be HTTP. Okay, uh, we're just going to say use this. Cut that back. And that's cool. That should be good now. So, on this one, API ping. Call to undefined method, stand database models, tenant domains. Bad method call. So I, the, the sparsity package isn't quite what I'm after, basically. So we're having issues with our model now for the domains. Um, model tenant. It's saying it doesn't have called it undefined method tenant domains forwards calls. So is that, why is that basically? Hey, hey, has uh, da, 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 da. tenant roots. This is your multi tenant application. The idea of a current tenant is X. Um, so we are preventing access from central domains, so we shouldn't be able to access that API route from the central domain. Um, Migrations, quitting tenants, PHP artists and Tinker. Okay, so if I just go make PHP 
can go PHP, Artisan, Tinker. Will it let me use it? No. It always dies when I try and do it on here. Okay. Um. Hmm. Foo.localhost. Okay, so I should be able to go to tenant.crm. 404 not found. Because it's not finding that tenant. Awesome. I think we got it. Let's just migrate all of our databases and we're good for now. We'll just um, migrate them all. Eventually we're just going to be moving them around. Actually, I'll tell you what we'll do. Um, we're going to come down to our migrations quickly. Database migrations. And what we've got, we've got users, passwords. We've got... Um, that is a tenant migration. You factor that. Personal access tokens, that's all to do with a tenant, so we can refactor that. Domains, tenants, and failed jobs, so we're going to run jobs locally, um, centrally. Each tenant is going to publish inwards. So, Docker exec um, CRM underscore PHP artisan PHP artisan migrate fresh. Oh, I still can't spell correctly. Oh, it's one of those days again. Cool. So any time a tenant is created, it will now create that user. So there we go. That user is now going to be only for new tenants, which is fine. That's exactly what I want. Um, but it means that we have to create a... Through the API, we need to create a tenant. So part of that sign-up process is create a tenant, create a user on that tenant. Um, and on the website, what you do typically here is you'd go like, um, you know, sign up, part of your sign up process is cool. Take card details, blah, 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 do all of this, take payment, yeah, set stuff up, basically is what you'd be doing. Um, what is next? Um, I know. Make generate. Make analyze. So we've added some code blocks. And I'll show you what they look like. How long have we been going? Hour and a half. So if we come down to our tenant model now, what you'll see, we've got all of these property read domains mix in using for eloquent app models tenant. And again, for the user. And what I can do is I can start to clean some of this up. And yet we use fillable. Of course we use fillable. Always going to use fillable. Because fillable is how we do stuff here. Let's make sure this has got to clear. That's cool. It's got to declare strict types. Uh, so, git commit minus m. Uh, ID helper doc blocks and setting up API tenant booting. We're doing good. We are doing good. So, what do we need? We've, we've done some basic stuff. We need to do some data modeling. Now, I can do it on here, but that's going to take too long, you know, doing it twice then. Um, so we're going to do it here. So let's make a new model. So make a model. Uh, we've got a tenant. So uh, if we come back to to here and we come down to our functionality, what do we know we're going to need? We're going to need companies, right? Cool. So make a company. Make a model company. Done. Um, I just realized I didn't do migrations or anything. So sorry. We're going to delete that. And we're going to have a migration, we're going to have a factory, and we're going to create a cedar too. Yeah. That's created that. Uh, that's our company. Then we're going to say, okay, department. 
Cool. And team. Contact. Job title. And we're going to call it a day with that one for now. So the idea is, the first step is going to be, okay, so we want to be able to you know, manage our contacts, basically. That's, that's the first step in making this. So what we want is all of these belong to a tenant. Each tenant is going to have his own specific migrations for these. So companies. Again, I probably should have done some setup beforehand and edited the stubs, or I should probably try and create a package to publish my own stubs to make things easier, but I haven't. So we're just going to add a UUID in here, and we call this UUID, and then we're going to obviously say unique. So company, a company is going to have a string value for the name. Um, gonna have like a contact email for that company. It's gonna be like hello at or one of those. Um, it could just be your contact, specific contact one at that time. Then we're gonna have, okay, suggesting phone for the company. So I'm gonna add that. And uh, website, so we're gonna add that. Logo, no, not bothered about that. And we'll call it we'll, we'll call it quits with that. That's that's a basic. Here is a company. Little quick profile, done. Um, next, we got department. So we can go look at our department, and we can say, okay, so I know I'm not doing anonymous migrations yet. I will refactor them later on to use anonymous migrations. Do not worry. Do not fear. I know I have not done them. So why do I to use ID and UUID? So that is a very actually good question. What I do is my SQL, yeah, as the data get doing a yeah a integer check on a foreign key is quicker than doing a string value check um, as a foreign key for. Okay, in general, it's quicker to look up I integer instead of string because string's got to do a comparison. ID is a shorter, yeah, comparison in terms of binary data. So, I use IDs for referencing in the database and UUIDs for referencing externally. Basically, I have our stubs. Um, I've had a look at it, but it's it's not quite what I like to do. Not quite. If it was a little bit closer, I would use it. And I'd rather just publish my own because then I can do it exactly as I want to do it. Um, we're going to have a uh, department's just going to have a name. Um, a department is then going to have a foreign ID for the company ID which is going to be nullable um, gonna index it's gonna be constrained and well let me drop some of these down so it's more legible and then it's gonna be null on delete so basically, it's just got that uh, belongs to link for that department. Um, the name is not going to be unique. It's not the end of the world. Um, but the name should be unique for the tenant. So it's fine. Next. Uh, teams. We are looking good. Looking good. Um... Again, we're pretty much going to have this. 
there. But instead of a company ID, this is going to have a department. So it's creating that structure, right? It's an organization has many depart. A company has many depart uh, departments. Each department is built up of many teams. Um, so you know, you know who to who to access, who to contact. What we could probably do is we could have like a like a team could have like a extension number on a phone, for example, later on if we need to. So UUID name department, all that good stuff. Um, contacts table. We're going to keep contacts clean and minimal to start with, and we're going to extend when we want to focus on on those. I don't think we're going to focus today. Uh, da -da -da. So our contacts. We're going to have some basic stuff in contacts. So we're going to have a table string. We have a first name. We have a last name. We're going to have a preferred name, which is like a nickname. You know, what what do they want to be? What do they want to be called? Uh, we're going to add a middle name. That could be one or multiple within there, and that is fine. Um, we're going to add a UUID, which is unique. We're going to add a string at the top for title. You know, is it a Mr, a Mrs, is it a Miss, a Miss, a Master, a Doctor, a Professor, Reverend? You know, what, what's their title? Um, which I'm hoping I could probably do is like a, an enum. Uh, then we've got preferred name. Then we're going to have a table string. Again, a unique value for email. This, yeah, this is our contact email. And then we're going to have a table string, not unique, phone. I'm going to come back later and do some of these as like a nullable and not nullable. Um, and for now, I'm just going to call it at that. I like soft deletes on, on these sorts of things. And then I like to use prunable. So I'm going to come back, add soft deletes. But because I'm going back to all of them, I can return a new class and make these anonymous migrations. That one's done. Add soft deletes. Return a new class. That's done. Do that. Add my soft deletes. Return the new class. And that one's done. Last one is soft deletes. Turn that new class, then that is done. So now if we just quickly make sure that statically analyze that. Message migration. So I don't think we can do that yet. We might be doing like notes and that sort of thing. But right now, I'm just keeping it really basic, Bernard, just for now because I've been going for an hour and 44 minutes and it's coming up to my finishing time, basically. I want to make sure our test is still passing, everything's still working as expected, and then it's going to generate everything that I know I need. So, let's get company, department, team, contact, titles, Job titles, isn't it? Yeah, job titles. So, job titles, string, name, and I add table, UUID, because you know it's going to be access to the API. Uh, I'm not going to soft delete them because that seems a little pointless. Um, Obviously, void return on that one. 
add some of that and then return a new class and add the declare strict types do, 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 do. I don't know how well this works because it's not got a database to connect to connect to so I don't know if that's I don't know if this will work very well what benefit do you get from making the migrations anonymous? That's a pretty good question, actually, Andy. So the main benefit you get is if uh, packages, or if it's a larger application, um, and it's publishing its own migrations, or packages are publishing migrations, you don't get name collisions. Um, and as you get more and more and more and more migrations, and more packages that are publishing their own migrations, you start to get a lot, of, um, a lot more risk of collision of names for those uh, migration classes, basically. Right, so I'm just going to go through this and um, team Doo -doo 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 -doo. team there, that there. So protected fillable. So, UUID is fillable. What did I just do? UUID is fillable. Name is fillable. Department ID is fillable. This is our data modeling. Cool. And you've got use soft deletes. That's good. Um, I'll, I'll be doing something else for generative UUID, so that, that part will come. I'm not going to have time tonight, unfortunately, though. So that is our team fillable done. And what we can quickly do is add that. Teams are done. Next, let's add job titles. We can close down teams. So job titles. Um, there are no soft deletes, so we can just protected fillable. We've got a UUID, we've got a name, and that is all we need. We're an array of strings, declare strict types, and that is good. Contacts table, the next step, contacts. We can say this has definitely got soft deletes. We can add the strict types, and can we start adding fillable array so we're gonna have a EUID we're gonna have a title we're gonna have a first name a middle name a last name the third name actually let, let me go um, <laughs> Google spell check that one One F two R's. One F two R's. For third name. And then we're gonna have an email. We're gonna have a phone number. That is it. For now. We're probably gonna change some of this eventually. But for the basics of now. We're just going to get this quickly done. So that is uh, contact done. Departments is next. So let's move departments over to that side of the window, which means we can close contacts. Come up to department over here. We can uh, declare strict types. Um, this is going to use soft deletes. Here's our fillable array. So we want to have a UUID name and company ID. So UUID name and company ID. And that should be it. We'll worry about casting stuff later. It's, it's, it's not for now, basically. This is basic data modeling because I've got a guest joining me on my next stream. I wanna make sure I get enough done. So when, when he joins me, 
we can be productive. I might have to spend some time tomorrow night doing just a little bit. Uh, so company. So we're going to have uh, UUID. We're going to have name and email. This is a basic stuff for now. Um, phone and a website. Soft deletes already in. We're going to keep it at that. The classic types. Done, done, and done. And we're happy. So get status, get add, get commit, starting to data model for the tenant CRM. Cool. Make generate. Is there anything that's going to be generated for our tenant stuff now? No, it, it still isn't reading. It's, it's doing with the soft deletes, but it's still not getting the properties because it connects to a database, basically. So the way that generate does, it will connect to the database, get the database values and add that into doc, doc blocks. So I'm just going to have to go through and manually add some of this because it's just not supporting separate databases, which is fine. It's not the end of the world. I mean, if I analyze quickly, yeah, I'm passing static analysis. It's not killing me. Um, but in terms of consistency, it's bugging me. That's all. So now if I just uh, make migrate, everything's migrated. There's nothing to migrate because there's no tenants. I create a new tenant and it will migrate the database for me. Um, yeah, so far so good. Um, what I might do, because what I know I'm going to need to do, I'm going to have this dispatchable jobs running um, on the central, central domain and then obviously on the tenant domains everything's happening so when we're dispatching a job we're dispatching it centrally um i think failed job centrally something we'll figure that out um but i think we should have something what we're gonna do what we're gonna do Tenant, there's no tenant available, so Doo -doo -doo. Um, how can I do this nicely? I'll have a think. I'll have a think for next time. Hour and 52 minutes. Um, we've got you know, the start of a CRM. We've got some project planning going on here. This data modeling is now no longer needed, so I can just kind of um, delete that page. There's our basic functionality, and then I'm going to create a page here for API design. And what we're going to do is I'm going to scope out the you know the, the API endpoints that I'm thinking I'm going to need within here. That's obviously going to be YAML, so we know we're going to have some paths. Oop. We're going to have some paths in here. So we're going to have API slash um, add no contacts. We have API slash contacts slash contact UUID. Um, you know, but we, we want to be able to access our contacts. That's the important thing. The company and the org so. This is, this is getting into the API design aspect of it. You know, what's important to us for this API? Do we want to be able to access everything as a CRUD resource? Not really, we're, we're logging interactions. We want to be able to create organizations, create departments and get that information, but we want to interact with our contacts and projects. So we're going to have API projects, which is going to give us our active projects. API projects. We're going to have a project UUID, which is going to give us, um, you know, the, the the specific one project. Then we're also going to have things like, um, you know, API interactions. You know, log. You know, give me my interactions, and I want to be able to create interactions and modify interactions. You know. Basically, just one endpoint. So, okay, so create this interaction. I can give you the contact. I can give you the project. I can give you something. Here's an interaction. Log it. Just bang. Done. 
It doesn't have to be attached to anything. It's just straight done. What app am I using for your project documentation? So this is Notion. Um, it's I, I created. I used to use. Um, here's all my old live streams where I planned things out, and for that I used. Um, my streaming template which works uh, but I've created a new one for my YouTube channel because I'm gonna be doing more than live streams eventually I hope um, and then live stream here's the current live stream the next live stream I do I'll add in there I can open that as a page and I can add stuff I can yeah for so much I can do I can add like link to git and stuff it's, it's just cool uh, but for API design itself I'll be using most likely stoplight studio i think so that is probably as much as i'm going to get done for today um i don't even know what changed on those i think i just tested the id generator on tenant models i might message um barry and see what you can do for that one um I have a look. I, I still need to create the tenant and stuff, so we need to be able to make a tenant at some point. Maybe I'll do like a something. Maybe a seeder. We'll seed seed some data so we can test it. Um, but for now, I think that's fine. Just under two hours now, so we have a something relatively working. Obviously, that will fail domains does not exist we can access that central domain maybe i'll create a quick widget on here to say create a tenant and then we could do stuff we could do stuff with it um but i'll do that already for next time so next time this is where we are currently we have got to do, do, do episodes playlists CRM this is live this is our next one we've got Phil Sturgeon joining us next time um, and we will be doing we've got Phil, Stur Phil Sturgeon joining us um, who many obviously knows of Wikipedia of anything to do with API and all things API um, and we're going to be working through an API specification, how to create one, why it's important, and you know, while we're building out our, our API, we want to make sure we're building it properly, right? Um, we're going to be doing lots of cool stuff. We're going to be going through building out all of our tests. We're going to be doing static analysis. We're going to be doing lots of tests, and we want to make sure that also our application adheres to a contract test against an open api specification later down the line as well because then anybody integrating with us they can just use our open api they can mock our api and then when they're ready to start using it we don't have to do any sandbox moding it's just cool now i can speak to the actual api instead of this mocked api and it should work exactly the same in theory so that's what's next that is on thursday this coming thursday um that is us ready pretty much to rock and roll on thursday so the idea is we want to be able to create um create a contact show all our contacts show a specific contact but we're going to be following json api so we can say okay so when we view a specific contact and we ask to include the department or include the team and the department we're going to start seeing that org tree around that user appear um, so we're going to start seeing stuff and it's going to be fun um, I don't know how much of the API design we're going to get done because you know, it is, it's, it's a documentation process so it's not going to be the most fun for everybody to watch but it is going to be an interesting one for anybody interested in APIs um, and it's a process that we've got to go through if we're going to build a good API so we're going to team up on that one me and Phil we're going to tag team building out by open api then the next week after that we're going to carry we're going to build from that api 
uh, specification hopefully and that's all I've planned so far on the 25th I do have a talk for a Canadian PHP user group so I won't be available yeah Thursday's gonna be really interesting I can't wait but yeah, uh, the, the Thursday after this coming Thursday, I'm giving a talk for a Canadian user group. Um, will you be able to show us how to document the API? That is on Thursday, Bernard. Thursday is all about API documentation. You should love it. Um, and if you do this at work, your bosses should love it because it's it's a way you should be doing APIs. Um, but as far, until then, I suppose I'll see you later. You know, as usual, in the description below, that way, that way. I'm not too sure where I am on your screen. That way? No, that way, that way. Um, go, go, go join our Discord. Uh, we have a chat on there quite often. We talk about Laravel things, we help each other out. I ask questions about some of the streams and what people want to see. I get feedback so I can make sure that my next stream is a little bit better. Um, and I talk about some of my packages and I just kind of enjoy talking to people you missed a talk last week it should be going online at some point I will double check that one for you don't worry um, but other than that have a good night everyone I will see you on Thursday hopefully with Phil um, if something comes up because obviously Phil's living on a bike going around planting trees it might not come through um, we've arranged it but with Phil's schedule you, you just don't know sometimes but you know, things happen he could fall off his bike tomorrow, be an A&E, because he's come down a really steep hill. We just don't know. So hopefully he'll be joining us on Thursday. Uh, it's been agreed, it's been organised, but we'll see. Um, other than that, I will see you on Thursday. Have a good evening, have a good day tomorrow, and don't forget the rage. The rage? What rage? The Phil rage. I'm not giving him cider, it'll be fine. So, thank you very much everyone. I will see you all later. Have a good night. Bye-bye.